Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. Today we're taking a tour of a school bus that's been converted into an incredible tiny home on wheels. The design and engineering that went into this build is super impressive. The owners have thought of everything, including a jaw-dropping pantry, two extensive work-from-home offices, and even some secret storage compartments. So be sure to stay tuned all the way through this video because trust me, you're not gonna wanna miss any of the details. And if you like videos like this one where we showcase incredible homes and people living alternatively, make sure that you hit subscribe and that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new tour. Hi, we are Josh and Emily, and this is Aurora the Adventure Bus. Come inside and I'll take you for a tour. We were both working remote jobs and loved to travel, so we wanted to be able to do that more. We knew that the lifestyle was for us. Because we wanted to make it our own, building a bus out for ourselves was gonna be the best option for us. From the beginning of our build, it was really a cool relationship builder, just being constructive with each other and see how both of our creative minds were going to come together. We were both brainstorming as we were planning out our build of how we could have everything have a multiple purpose. We would talk things over, but some of my engineering background kind of came into play there too. We picked out different fittings and fixtures and appliances. And then we shopped for everything on Black Friday and we got a fairly good discount on it, about 10 to 15% on average. So that saved a lot of money up front, mm -hmm. but it ended up being a couple pickup truck loads of stuff, solar panels and AC and toilet, just everything for the bus. So that was fun. We found the bus at AAA bus sales. We paid seven grand for it and a hundred extra dollars to get all of the seats removed, yes. which was really worth it. The first portion of our bus build, we did in my uncle's heavy equipment shop. So we had access to lifts that could lift up the whole bus in the air. There's a lot of welding and mechanical work. And so I kind of had a background in that to begin with. The original purchase date of the bus was about two years ago. The last year of it, of the project, we're living in it as we built it. So that takes a little bit more time, but it was basically our second job, and our weekends were almost always working on the bus. So this is a 2004 International RE300 school bus. It has the DT466E engine in it. The transmission is an Allison 3060. The bus is 40 feet long, and we just went over a scale, and we are 35,000 pounds. We have the 200 gallon water tank, we have, I think it's an 80 or 90 gallon fuel tank, and then I have an additional 20 gallon fuel tank for the diesel heaters. Our fuel economy, it varies a lot with the wind, but it's between probably six at the low end and 10 at the high end. And that's towing a Jeep too. For the paint job, we did an automotive paint. It has the color and the clear all in one. It was a random orange color out of the catalog, but the cream is actually case power white, so like the old tractors. For the solar, we did 2,400 watts of solar and racking. It's pretty much the entire roof. We have three awnings that wrap around the bus. That keeps it much cooler than it normally would be. The roof raise, we did 18 inches. We cut it below the window, so we kept the original window locations. Split it right behind the driver's side window and the front door, and then just on top of the front windshield. That worked really well. Most of my time was spent working on the underbay. I cut off the original side skirts of the bus and welded up the insulated and heated underbay that goes all the way across the bus between the axles, basically as much as I could fit in. So this is all solid um, new framing. We did our own service truck door handles on the doors. The water tank that's on the passenger side, I still wanted to be able to gravity feed the water if I needed to. So the water's on this side, so we have an extra hose length so we can get to it. Pretty much all utilities are always on the driver's side. That was one of the things that if I were to do it again, I would probably mirror the layout so that all the utilities are still on the one side. 
Up at the top here, we have one of our tanks. We have three tanks on the bus. They're all 40 gallons each. And I have them tied so there's two that are always black. And then I have one tank that's either gray or black, depending on how I have the valve set up. With 120 gallons, we can last a week with showering every day, using water like you're in a house, and two weeks if we're able to actually drain our gray tanks. So this is our 05 Jeep uh, Wrangler. We love this thing. I ended up putting a little bit of a lift on it. That works nice for the tow bar because it keeps it nice and parallel for us and keeps the tow bar up. But we use this thing all the time. The bus is way too big to go off-roading with. So this we'll take on the trails and do whatever we want. Also rerouted the exhaust so it's blowing out the side and that keeps the Jeep nice and clean. This is our 50 amp shore power hookup. We can do 30 or 50. We use that a lot when we're at families and friends' houses. This is our electrical panel. So we have everything nicely labeled and organized, easy to get to. Then behind that is my battery storage. So on here, you can see some of our batteries on that side, but we have a big inverter here from Sun Gold Power. It's a 240 volt split phase inverter. We have 680 amp hours of batteries at 24 volts. So it provides us plenty of power to run multiple days. And this is my little tiny garage space. We have a 12 gallon tank of gas that is tied into our generator. And then we have two propane tanks that run our stove and our water heater. And then with the front door, what we wanted to do was just make one swing door. So I used the same hinge point as the original bus door. Basically sandwiched the door with sheet metal and then we put a normal household residential door lock on it. We also put a self-closer on because we're from South Dakota and we didn't want the wind catching the door all the time. We also have a backup latch for when we're in the bus and we want to make sure it's secure for the evening. And then to keep the door insulated, we have curtains that snap onto the door. We have a top and bottom curtain so that when we're driving we can still have insulation on the bottom portion of the curtain. And then moving on, we added storage into our dash. So we have storage that goes underneath the floor all the way to basically the midpoint of the bus. And that's where we keep our road flares and the safety equipment. And then we have two compartments that have shoes in it. If we move further in, we have our cat's litter box and his food and water dish. So along with the cat area, we also did storage at the top of the dash pulled out the original metalwork and heaters and all that. So we have spots where we can put glasses, just random things as we're driving along the road. And then in front of that, we have all of our herb plants. They're just coming back from a winter in South Dakota and Colorado, so they're a little rough right now. We wanted to ride together when we're going down the road, and we didn't want to have another like side seat or have her sit on the couch. So we used our Jeep's rear bench seat and welded up a bracket and then mounted it onto an air ride seat pedestal for like a semi truck. I also redid the whole dash. I pulled everything off down to the metal. I left the gauge cluster where it was and the transmission control module where it was. It was way too much work. It took like four or five weekends of just kind of fitting stuff together because nothing's square or true to anything else. So as we were putting the sheet metal back on the bus after the roof raise, I was up front and I saw I was looking at it and went, well, why don't we put a window instead of putting the sheet metal back up? So we put two panes up. We normally drive with this curtain down. It's on a um, electric motor. So that'll come and cover the whole front window when we're parked. When we're at a tight intersection where the stoplights are really close to the bus, I can look up through that window and see the stoplights. It's kind of a nice little feature. But we also like it because when we're standing in the bus, we can still look out the front window. It's not lower down. Going further back, we have our couch. So our couch converts into a queen size bed. And it also converts into an L-shaped couch for when we have guests and we want to entertain a little bit in different format. We used memory foam mattress topper in the cushions. That makes it soft enough. It's nice to sleep on as a guest bed, but firm enough that it kind of holds up for sitting on it as a couch. Emily sewed up all of the cushions for the covers and it turned out pretty nice. And then we have storage, just drawers and the countertop and that's where our first wheel well is too so that kind of covers the wheel well. During my work day I have a laptop set up here and then I can plug into these two monitors but for my hobbies I like to dabble in arts so I have an easel that I can 
prop up here. I have lots of storage for all my work supplies. So we both work remotely. I work for a structural engineering firm that's based out of Minneapolis. And I work for a engineering consulting company out of Massachusetts. We did not want to have both offices in one area because we'd have four monitors and it'd just be too much. I like to be very quiet. You love to sing <laughs> and sing along to music, so it's nice to be able to just have our own spaces. As we keep going backward into the kitchen, our favorite thing that we have is our countertop dishwasher. It is a Farberware. For us, it can hold a good day or two's worth of dishes, and that is just a luxury that we would not go without. We love our full-size sink. We do a lot of cooking here, which is why we prioritize our kitchen space, so we knew that we needed to have a big sink to do all of those big dishes. So then likewise, we have a apartment size fridge. It's a Dometic fridge. What we love about it is it's an RV style, so those doors latch for while we're driving. With our roof raise, we were able to have enough room for uppers without it feeling extra crowded. And so this gives us extra space for all of those extra specialty cooking items, which is super nice. And I do have a step stool to reach stuff just in case, because sometimes if it's at the very back, you end up needing it. Our stove is a graystone stove. The one thing that we do wish we did differently was get the deeper version of this, because with as much cooking that we do and baking, we barely have enough room to have a loaf of bread rise in our oven. With having a corner stove, there's a couple of spots that you can't access with normal drawers. So we have a lift off um, cubby where we store all of our really big bulky things. So in this one, we have our backpacking backpacks and then this corner one in the back is similar and we have all of our specialty cooking items like a crock pot and pasta machine. Our pride and joy is definitely our spice rack for sure. We specially thought about keeping the spices in while they're driving so they don't rattle out, but to access them, we tip them up and out to get them out. And so we did the same concept on the spice rack as the pantry and for our liquid storage. So lift up and out to access stuff. And it rides super, super nice. We really don't notice any rattling while we're driving unless it's a super bumpy road, which is why we added rubber bands around all of the jars. None of the jars, if you buy stuff at the store, are going to fit together very nice. So we decided that the easiest way to optimize that was to standardize all of the containers that they're in. We really enjoy having meal times together. So our pantry can flip up here and it latches right here on this side, or we can flip it all the way up to access the rest of our pantry. So we decided to keep the original emergency exit door. It was a foot and a half shorter, so I had to extend it and add a panel in between. I'm glad we did all the work that we did on this door because we use it all the time. We will pull our Jeep up beside the bus and unload our groceries right into our pantry area so then we don't have to carry them through the front door. We actually also have steps mounted on the side of the bus so we can just climb up. It's really simple to use. And coming back here, we have our hallway and we have our raised floor. So we raised the floor up a foot in the back half of the bus and we have storage underneath the whole floor. And it's just enough room for a tall guy like me to walk in the hallway without hitting my head. So in the office, we still have all the raised flooring. There are some areas that are solid floor because there's engine bay underneath it. This is all storage from here to here. And then below that, that's all engine bay. And I have custom panels that will all pull off if I need to work on something. Then I have all my construction die cast models that I had from my previous job. Just something fun to have back here. They're all wired down so they don't move, which is great. Otherwise, that'd be a pain. This is where I work. My desk flips up. If I need to access, I have my desktop is on one side. We have a drawer base and then just storage on the other. It's a very convenient office. My chair just rides right here. It kind of gets locked into place when we're going down the road. Then underneath me right here, we have our deep freeze. So we just have an apartment sized, it's like a two foot by two foot by three foot deep, deep freeze. So we have that and it kind of extends kind of in front of the engine bay. We have a really good insulated wall and it stays nice and cool, doesn't run a whole lot. So it's very nice to have. And then in front of that, 
we have access to the engine bay. So this is where I can check oil and do maintenance. And we used a, it's a fire blanket off of, like from a welding supply shop. And that's just kind of our fireproofing and keeps the sound and heat out of the, the office. So you walked through the bedroom, but you didn't get to see much of it. What we have in our bedroom is we have a queen size bed. And then the only utility that we have in our cab is a 200 gallon water tank. So that is what is under the bulk of our bed. On this front side is where we have all of our closet stuff. So we have just these simple cubbies to store everything. Our bathroom is right in here, but I want to highlight our bathroom door. So we still have plans to add a curtain to it, but we really enjoy having the fact that it can close off the bathroom or the hallway. So we can latch it here and then that'll separate our meetings if we are both on meetings because our offices are separated by this door. So then as we go in the bathroom, we really love having the bathroom elevated with the back half of the bus because under this cubby, we have a full size laundry basket where we can shove all of our dirty laundry. And then our shower, we decided to sink down to keep all the water within the shower pan. So the shower base is actually the same height as the front portion of the bus. And then we have an adjustable shower head for Josh because he is very, very tall. For our shower walls, we ended up doing a vinyl flooring tile. And so the only thing that we had to be extra careful about was to make sure that the tongue and grooves were oriented the right way so that water didn't collect in them. So we were extra conscious of how we were going to install these tiles, but so far they're working great. So with the RV style toilet, we have a black tank, which we prefer so that we don't have to take and dispose of anything. The actual sink itself, we did a succulent planter. So it doesn't drain the best, but we do love how small and tidy it is for our space. So behind this door, we have our control panel for the bus. We decided to put it behind a door because there's a lot of lights and things you can't dim. And it's right near our bedroom, so we want something to keep the bus completely dark. So inside the door, I made these custom, they're aluminum sheet metal that I mount to each panel into it. And these actually hinge out if I need to work behind them. But we have our charge controllers for the solar, various gauges. We have controls for fans for central heating, diesel heater controls, and then our inverter control down here. My perspective on things has definitely changed. When you start driving the country instead of flying over it, it's just so much bigger, it's so much more varied. You start traveling a whole bunch, you kind of get confused, like, okay, what state am I in now, <laughs> type of thing. This lifestyle is so surreal. The people are so nice. Any person, any walk of life can do this. It's very cool that even though, despite all those differences of family sizes and walks of life, everyone is still united by that love of travel and living tiny and being more introspective of your relationships and connecting with people and nature. You can almost always connect with anyone on the road. And everybody has done something very hard. They've all built something that they're living in. Everybody has those struggles and can relate in that way. Thanks for watching this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to see more schoolie tours, tiny homes, shipping containers, or other unique homes, make sure that you check out my playlists. And I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.